So welcome back, everybody. We are live here with Victory Road hosting the Victory Road paired with GG Tour uh, Series 12 Challenge. I, myself, am Costa, uh, aka Twala, joined by Boyt. Frustrating Boyt. No, I'm joking. By the lovely Boyt, <laughs> which I love so much. <laughs> Anyways, but yes, we are here for Top 16, of course. Um, once again, exciting matches are coming up. We do have uh, Palo versus North. For your top 16, Jamie. Yeah, yeah into, the, in, into the top 16 here. And so we've got some uh, very cool picks coming out here. Groudon Calyrex Shadow Rider was not a pairing that I had on my radar as a as a restricted pair. But here we are in the top 16 with those Pokemon uh, going up against the expected pairing of the Kyogre and the Zacian. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely going to be an interesting matchup. And I have no idea what to expect uh, with this pairing. I've never seen the interaction of Groudon Calyrex versus uh, Kyogre Groudon. You do, of course, have the Weather War, which is going to mm -hmm. almost certainly uh, make an impact impact in this game uh, but then the Calyrex just has a slight edge over Zacian because it doesn't normally outspeed and uh, with the open team sheets that we know the Calyrex has access to Will-O-Wisp as well so uh, that is going to put it even further in the Calyrex's favor uh, facing down against the opposing Zacian. Yeah as we're gonna actually be seeing Juan leading with Grimmsnarl, Zapdos, double shiny, double um, cool stats given to themselves <laughs> whilst we see Kyle talking about doubles, double restricted straight off the bat. Calyrex, Shadow Rider, and Groudon. Uh, you, we're just talking about Jamie. We don't commonly see this pairing match up, but um, we see Kyle's got uh, an idea of two about why this should be the lead. Yeah, you don't really see the two restricted pairs uh, initially in the lead. So usually you maybe you go with one and then leave one in the back for later. But going with the Calyrex and Groudon stri straight away here into the opposing Zapdos. And the Grimmsnarl, uh, it's, the Groudon's matching up very well here against the opposing Zapdos. Uh, but he could go just go for an airstream and do some good damage, but if it doesn't want to go for the Dynamax yet, uh, then it would just have to go for the Hurricanes instead in the sun, which isn't ideal. Uh, it could go for an Eerie Impulse into the Cataract to be able to put a stop to that, but it looks like it is going on the Dynamax straight away. Uh, there's no fa fake tears that are on this Grimmsnarl. It's just going to be the, the normal screens in the Thunder Wave, but does have access to foul play, uh, so it could be doing some very mm. good to the opposing Cataracts because it does have access to a dark type attack. Uh, but the Zapdos here most likely going to want to start getting those speed boosts, get those airstreams going, uh, can break the focus sash on the Calyrex and put itself mm -hmm. faster than it if it is running that max speed as well. Uh, but no Dynamics is coming out from Kyle's side of the field, and there is going to be that classic screen coming out from the Grimmsnarl. Yeah, so Reflect able to add that additional bolt for physical type uh, attacks on Juan's uh, side of the field. We do see the Astral Barrage dealing a bit of chip damage onto both of Juan's Pokemon there. Max Airstream comes out from the Zapdos into the Groudon, does a detrimental damage onto that Groudon, being able to reduce it beneath half of its HP's range. But of course, we see the Citrus Berry proc being able to recover that tiny bit more, which is so, so crucial. And talk about crucial, we see the Rock Slide uh, straight up missing onto the Zapdos there. So Zapdos able to evade that bit of chip damage, which sure, the Reflect is up, Jamie, but every bit of damage really, really counts against the uh, screen teams. Yeah, especially against the Dynamax Pokemon as well. Uh, that was a nice bit of chip damage that was missed out on on the, on the Zapdos, and it may be faster than the opposing Calyrex at this point. Uh, the Grimmsnarl probably won't be faster, if, even with two Airstream boosts that could come out from the opposing Zapdos, and the Groudon most likely will be able to survive another Airstream. It'll be very close based on the previous damage. That Citrus Berry may allow it to just be able to survive the combination of two Airstreams coming out from the Zapdos, uh, but you could just go for the double up into the Calyrex at this point, break the Focus Ash with an Airstream, and then just follow up with the KO with the Falcon play as well. It looks like we're opting for the Dynamax of the Groudon, even after it's taken a significant amount of damage and used up its Citrus Berry at this point. Uh, looks like that is the Pokemon that Kyle wants to be going for, the Dynamax. Uh, pairing up with the Gastrodon, that now that it's switching in for the Calyrex, uh, is going to be able to shrug off any of the attacks that the Zapdos would want to go for. The Airstream would definitely still hurt, but uh, we'll would be able to take those Lightnings very well if that is what the Zapdos has opted for. Uh, but the Dynamax Groudon, uh, even though the Reflect has been set up here, it does want to be doing some much better damage than just Rocks Light can do. And Rockfall can't miss either. No, it cannot. And at this point, I think Kyle wants to keep their Groudon uh, sufficiently healthy, uh, per se, and not get uh, downed by this Max Airstream, which, of course, due to the doubling of its health uh, through Dynamax, it will definitely survive this. It will be able to go ahead and flick damage as well. But we have Foul Play coming out, nearly picking up the KO through that double up. The Calyrex absolutely ignored both for the previous turn and the current turn. So first two turns absolutely ignored 
ignored. The Dashrodon is in uh, is on the field right now. Does get that special defense boost thanks to Groudon's max quake. But unfortunately, over on Kyle's side, he wasn't able to successfully uh, pick off that Grimmsnarl. I was able to survive with the ground and get a very crucial Max Quake special defense boost on the Gastrodon. And now it's going to be able to take on the take on the Zapdos and the and the Kyogre that's surely waiting in the back as well very, very comfortably. And because that the Grimmsnarl only has access to foul play instead of Spirit Break, it can do almost nothing to this Gastrodon. Usually Spirit Break would be able to do some noticeable damage and get the drops in the special attack. Uh, but this Grimmsnarl is effectively useless against the opposing Gastrodon. Might be why it's switching out here. And it's actually just going to be a Rillaboom switching in for one side of the field. So they have left either the Zashin or the Kyogre on the bench. And it makes a lot of sense because uh, Rillaboom's going to be able to take those Max Quakes uh, quite nicely, as well as go ahead and exert that damage, that offensive pressure onto the Gastrodon and the Groudon, but not on the Groudon anymore, as it's actually been opted to switch straight out for the Incineroar on Kyle's side of the field. So Dynamax, you don't commonly see only be used for that one turn, and then the Dynamax Pokemon is switched straight out. So Kyle is depending on this uh, dramatic switch up right here, does not want Groudon to go down. And of course, due to that, the Incineroar is gonna be taking the bulk of that Max Airstream. It does more than survive, and thanks to that Brass Terrain, which is now on the field, it will be able to recover a bit of HP. And we do actually see the Dashrodon. Uh, yes, of course, it's the slowest, Pokemon on the field, but it can be quite crucial getting that yawn off as it's been able to uh, do so onto the Zapdos, potentially even threatening it to be switching out this turn. Yeah, maybe it needs to decide now whether it wants to keep those speed boosts to be able to outspeed the opposing Calyrex, uh, but if it stays in, it's just going to go to sleep at the end of the turn. And now the Dynamax has been used up. The Hurricane is going to be a lot more awkward to click, especially with the sun still being up, going, going to be juiced to half accuracy at this point, and Thunderbolt's not going to be doing too much at all either. Uh, but the Gastron is facing down the opposing Rillaboom at this point, and that's the Pokemon it didn't want to see waiting in the back, uh, because you got the special defense boost on the Gastron. It'd be able to take on the Kyogre very, very well, but Rillaboom is just just be able to bypass that Max Quake special defense boost and just be able to pick it off uh, the Gastron really easy with any kind of grass type attack that it will want to go for, especially because this is a leftovers Gastrodon. Uh, no Rindo Berry on the Gastron. It would just be able to be uh, cleanly knocked out by the opposing Rillaboom. Uh, the Incineroar could go for a fake out to put a stop to that, but then you've got to risk the potential mm. fake out coming out from the opposing Rillaboom as well. Yeah, as we're going to be seeing, the Zapdos did opt to switch out. The Grimstar has switched in right now. It does have very, very small HP. Um, but of course, uh, the Yawn status was the most crucial thing there. Juan allowing um, the Grim Snarl to go down here if it does accept an attack in that slot. And we see the Rillaboom going for the U-turn as the Incineroar did switch out for the Calyrex Shadow Rider as well. And that is so important as now the Focus Ash, temporarily at least, has been broken on this Calyrex and does allow uh, Juan to go ahead and bring in their Kyogre. So not what you commonly see um, as a choice of Pokemon to be switched in here against Gastrodons, but um, maybe Juan's got some sort of plan that they're thinking about right now. As we see, Kyle just wanted to make the sure play of going into uh, using Yawn and going into the same slot, that Zapdos slot, in case it was switched out. Yeah, so you've broken the Focus Ash on the Calyrex, which is very crucial. Uh, the Kyogre could be able to pick up a knockout with a uh, Water Spout, maybe, maybe an Origin Pulse. Uh, but you can't go for a Max Geyser yet because that Gastron is just still sitting on the field, keeping the Calyrex safe from that. Uh, so you do it have to be a little bit risky going for those spread type Water Attacks to try and damage the Calyrex. Uh, but if you do that, you get the give the Special Attack Boost to the opposing Gastron as well. And the Grim Snarl is very low at this point. It would, if it sets up the Light Screen, it probably will be able to survive the Astral Barrage coming out. Uh, but you do need to be careful Careful because the Grimstone is so low, if you do just pick up a knockout uh, with the Astral Barrage, that is going to be uh, snowballing quite quickly. Uh, but just protecting here, keeping itself safe from the Thunder Wave. Oh. The Origin Pulse was launched off as well, so that's just a free boost for the Gastrodon. Oh, very risky play from Juan there. You can see the desperation of trying to make sure that the Galarex essentially gets removed from the field. And for its um, uh, benefits and struggles, the Kyogre is going to actually get yawned right now. Not only does it give that Storm Drain play plus, uh, sorry, the Gastrodon, the Storm Drain, plus one special attack boost. Uh, right now, it's just not having a lot of pressure, and I think Kyle has that passive pressure against both of Juan's Pokemon. 
Yeah, that was a great turn for Kyle there. The Grimmsnarl can't Thunderwave the Calyrex anymore. It can just launch off that Astral Barrage, and Lightscreen wasn't set up at all, so it could be very close if the Grimmsnarl is going to be in range of the Astral Barrage. And if it is, then you just get to start going with your, your Grim Naze and start being able to do some huge amount of damage with the opposing Astral Barrage. And if you stay in with the, the Kyogre to go for another Origin Pulse to start dealing with the Calyrex, uh, then you just go to sleep at the end of next turn, so you almost certainly have to switch out the Kyogre because that's uh, surely going to be the Pokemon you want to Dynamax uh, on one side of the field. But then you could just be switching out uh, into the Rillaboom that could be eating a potential Ice Beam from the Gastron. If you go for an Ice Beam into that Kyogre, it's either staying in and going to sleep or you're hitting something that you definitely want to be Ice Beaming. Yeah, and the Calyrex just showing its fear. It wants to uh, immediately remove itself from the field. Groudon does come in, however, does switch up the weather right now. So Kyogre no longer has its um, uh, rain-boosted moves that it's able to go ahead and use. Origin Pulse does still come out, though. So Juan is still wanting to go ahead and um, get damage off, even though they will be incurring the Yawn Sleep status at the end of this turn. Groudon is out for the count, but at the this point currently, Juan, even though they do still have the Pokemon on the field, they do exert damage. Um, they're in a situation where they're just being put to sleep, essentially. And that's from this uh, Gastrodon, which is completely unopposed. It's just going for yawns. And if there's going to be any sort of switch-ins, Juan's aware of it and tries to opt to go, keep the Pokemon in, and maybe predict any sort of yawn predictions. And you can see Carl there covering the, the switch very nicely. Going for Ice Beam into Kyogre was completely safe because even though there's very negligible damage this turn, it, if they switched into the Rillaboom, that would have taken a huge chunk of damage. And if they opt to stay in and take no damage from the Ice Beam, they do go yeah. to sleep like what you see here uh, as the choice for Juan. And now the Grimstall has been recovered a little bit with the Grass Terrain. It's probably still going to be out of range of the Astral Barrage at this point. Could be waking up now that it's taken at least one turn of sleep. We'll have to see if it is able to wake up and get any Light Screens or Thunder Waves. Not going to be waking up this turn so this is just going to be free damage for this Calyrex going for another Astral Barrage. It really will be and uh, initially I thought oh wow the Groudon's been switched out from its Dynamax form straight after the first turn that it was actually used but then again Kyle was able to see uh, you know a couple of spots and turns ahead in time and they theorized that they thought that Gashadon could put in so much work uh, with con you know continuous yawns and that's essentially what Gashadon has done I think so far complete MVP and we see the Calyrex is <laughs> very close to regaining its focus sash but just misses out as the grass terrain did co temporarily you know leave the field but I think the Rillaboom will be coming back and reactivating it yeah, it will be, and could be activating the Focus Sash once again. You've got to assume that the Rillaboom is going to be the, the choice of Pokemon for Juan to Dynamax here, because it would be incredibly risky to Dynamax the Kyogre, mainly because it's asleep, but also because the Gastrodon uh, is still on the field. And if you go for uh, Dynamax and try and get the, the Water-type moves again, uh, then that's just going to be absorbed by the Gastrodon just going for a Protect to keep it safe. And it's so low anyway at this point uh, yeah. that you've got, to, you've got to assume that the Rillaboom would be the Pokemon to go for. But then you lose the access to the Priority Grassy Glide, and that would just allow the Calyrex to go for a plus one Astro barrage at this point almost certainly going to be enough to pick up the knockouts uh, on the opposing Kyogre at this point mm. so allowing the Calyrex to start getting those boosts uh, could be a bit awkward here especially because there's oh no because the Dynamax was used on the Zapdos so uh, very early on of course yeah. so uh, yeah so that's just going to be the Rillaboom staying in taking a huge amount of damage from the Astral Barrage yeah, exactly. So the Kyogre is down for the count. We see Grimne uh, proccing their special attack boost given to this Calyrex. Knockoff, however, comes out, does pick up that near one hit KO. Of course, we saw that uh, Calyrex was uh, very shy off of full HP. The Focus Sash did not activate as a result of this. And we do see Gastrodon now going for the Ice Beam at plus one special attack. Oh, apologies. Plus two, I believe. Special attack. It's able to go ahead, pick up the KO on that Rillaboom, uh, leaving this in a two versus one scenario, I believe, against Juan's Pokemon. Yeah, and that, that Pokemon is just going to be a Zapdos that can't really deal with this Gastrodon at all. No. Uh, ha would have to hit a Sunnicane and then try and hope for some confusions, maybe, but uh, that's almost certainly got, not going to be enough at this point. You've got Fake Out Pressure on the Incineroar as well. It could go for some boosted Flare Blitz, and that probably still even be enough to pick up the knockout uh, on the opposing Zapdos as well. So uh, it's looking very dire for, for one at this point. It's opting to not go for any kind of Protect. Oh, it doesn't even have access to Protect the Zapdos. It is opting for Eerie Impulse and Roost. So very free Fake Out, very free 
Valkyrie Ice Beam. That's yeah. going to pick up the knockout on the opposing Zapdos and take that first game for Kyle. So that Gastrodon are really putting in a lot of work there. There was one key turn that there could have been a Rillaboom Grassy Glide into that Gastron because it did not go for a Protect. It went for a second yeah. Yawn, trying to keep that Yawn uh, cycle going. And that was the missed opportunity, it seems, for Juan. They've gone for the Grassy yeah. Glide into the Gastron at that point. That puts a stop to any of the Yawns. It puts a stop to the Storm Drain. It frees up the Kyogre completely. But that's one really strong prediction from Kyle, expecting that U-turn, or at least not the Grassy Glide into the Gastron. It just opened it up completely. Yeah, it's very tough because it's uh, basically VGC is a very slippery slope, especially when it comes to this format. Um, you go ahead and basically you get one wrong prediction uh, and then essentially you can lose the game because it's kind of a domino effect. As we see, um, Juan opted not to try to go for it, maybe thought that Kyle would play more defensively in that scenario, but Kyle wanted to keep that yawn pressure going, like you mentioned, Jamie. So... Uh, the moment that happens, then there's a lot of lost uh, distance that you need to regain, recover, and try to go and surpass it. So in this scenario, Kyle was just able to be ahead of the game multiple turns in a row and was able to just phenomenally go ahead and pick up that game one win. But now we're going into game two. What are your thoughts about Juan's strategy trying to get back, Jamie? It's, it's always awkward leaving one of your restrictors on the bench. Uh, the Zashian is still fine, really, into any matchup. It's a Zashian. Uh, but against uh, opposing Groudon and the Charizards and Gastrons that can come out, uh, those aren't the Pokemon it wants to be uh, hitting, really. It doesn't have access to play rough, this Zashian, so it's not mm. going to be able to deal with the Gastron very well. Uh, it seems like we're getting similar leads from both players here with the Calyrex and the Groudon uh, coming out for Kyle's side and the Zapdos and the Grunsnarl on one side of the field. Uh, so this is what we saw initially, and we just saw the Zapdos was going for air streams immediately uh, it was doing some very good damage but not enough uh, damage uh, unfortunately for the zapdos and then was just have forced to switch out later on because of those yawns so i have to see yeah. if that is going to be the same thing that one's going to be going for if you go for the airstream you put yourself faster than the calyrex at least and you can do some very good damage to the opposing groudon we did see the groudon just use one turn of Dynamax to give one special defense boost, and that was it. So uh, Kyle could be making much better use of their Dynamax if they choose to go for the Groudon Dynamax uh, in this game as well. They could do it this turn go for the Dynamax with still full HP and a Citrus Berry intact, and then be able to get some Rock Falls onto the Zapdos, as well as the potential of just going for Quakes into the Grimmsnarl, uh, so it can take on the Zapdos a bit better. And if you do go for the Quakes, you can probably just switch in any of your Pokemon that you want those special defense boosts. Uh, like we are seeing here, the Calyrex is going to switch out and go into that Gastrodon that was so pesky in that first game. Yeah, it definitely will. And I think I do really like this sort of situation of how uh, Kyle's um, seen the matchup. So we see this one single Pokemon, Gastrodon, um, going ahead and essentially being so oppressive that Juan might have to double check and double think about bringing their water mode, Seismitoad and Kyogre. And um, then you got the scenario where um, Kyle completely uh, relies on this Gastrodon being the MVP of the game, so they'll just go ahead, lead with both Restricteds, uh, you know, put out so much damage, so much pressure onto Juan's side, but they already know that they could go ahead and solidify this matchup with that Gastrodon, so just going ahead, throwing whatever you can, damage-wise, pressure-wise, and then setting the Gastrodon up makes so much sense, and Juan's gonna have to try to break through this. As we see Juan opting to go for the Reflect with Grimmsnarl, uh, once again, similar to how um, game one did go, but actually we see a max airstream into the Gastrodon slot this time right now. So that's really good, both A, if the Calyrex does stay in, you break the Focus Ash, and very uh, rarely will you see the Grass Terrain turns of profiting and bringing it back to max HP, and then B, you deal so much damage onto Gastrodon, even if it does have leftovers. So we see Groudon, on the other hand, go for max Rockfall, into the Zapdos, deals a lot of good damage. You want to try to do the best that you can, but maybe a missed opportunity as Max uh, Quakes could have started setting up that Gastrodon. Well, the Gastron doesn't have access to recover. It's opting for Yawn and Protect with just the leftovers as the recovery. So that damage onto the Gastrodon is very, very nice to get down. And before any Max Quakes could have come out, uh, it would have uh, been able to do the good damage before the Max Quakes on the first turn as well. And so Gastrodon was the MVP in that first game. So getting this much damage and putting it in range of another potential airstream uh, is very nice for one side of the field. They got that Reflect to keep the, the Zapdos safe. They're switching in their Kyogre now for Ooh. the Grimmsnarl. They could be giving the Kyogre a speed boost as well with the airstreams, if, depending on how that's trained could be outspeeding the Calyrex that is waiting in the back as well. I we'll have to see if the, the Groudon is going to be going for another Rockfall because that would overwrite the rain that has just been set for Kyogre's side of the field. I'm going to keep the Gastrodon safe from this airstream that could be coming out from the Gastrodon into it. And yes, it is an airstream into protecting Gastrodon. 
makes a lot of sense. Uh, Gashadon is going to survive for yet another turn right now. Thanks to that protect, it will be able to recover a bit of that damage dealt onto it thanks to its leftovers. But Groudon does not opt to go for Max Rockfall. The weather stays with rain. Max oh, wow. though, wow, picks up the KO. Talk about staying critical hit. Kyoga is definitely not staying. It is out of game two. And all of a sudden, Juan looked like they had a really solid strategy. It was going to go quite well for them. They would have had the pressure with the Origin Pulse. Of course, the Kyoga normally would have survived that, but not in this scenario. All of a sudden, we see a heavyweight of a Pokemon that Juan could have used to their beneficial um, situation to the strategy to try to push this. So game three, absolutely knocked out in the turn, the same turn that it came in. Yeah, essentially the Grimstall didn't set a reflect that to, um, turn on turn one. It's just critting straight through it and just picking oh. up the knockout. Yeah, that would have been a fantastic position for one. Then it's needed to airstream the Gastrodon. Uh, only a double protect would have saved them from that. And if they don't go for that, uh, the Gastrodon is KO'd or they switch into a Pokemon that would be taking an Origin Pulse. And then you get a, most likely a single target Origin Pulse in the, yep. into the Groudon in the rain as well because they didn't go for a Rockfall. Uh, would have still had the Max Quake boost and would have been able to at least survive the Origin Pulse most likely. Uh, but yeah, that crit is, is huge to take out uh, the restricted the only restricted that was brought to the game once again for Juan they did opt to leave the Zashin on the bench uh, so mm -hmm. they still only have access to the Zapdos Rotoboom and Grimmsnarl at this point and as soon as you stall out the last turn of the airstream uh, that is going to be it for the airstreams that could come out uh, on one side of the field they could be boosting a little bit more maybe get the Rillaboom potentially faster than the opposing Calyrex that would be quite unlikely given how things mm -hmm. Rillabooms are usually trained uh, but definitely going to be keeping the Zapdos oh. safe this turn with a max guard from this rockfall I'm still feeling the pain of that crit as we're going to be seeing the max guard from Zapdos coming out. Very solid play there as Max Rockfall was trying to go into that slot. But then again, Jamie, we just see what we've previously seen. Gastrodon staying in uh, with a face against Rillaboom and just going for yawns. It does not respect this Rillaboom. Yeah, it just does not care. Like, it can take a Grassy Glide at any point, and it's an easy knockout. Even if the Gastrozone was at full HP, it would just be knocked out at this point. But uh, staring down that Rillaboom is once again going for the attack, and getting a Yawn off into the Rillaboom is really, really nice here, because it's going to have to start switching out to, to get rid of that Yawn and not go to sleep at the end of the turn. Uh, if you do opt to stay in and go for a Grassy Glide into either Pokemon, it will pick up a knockout on the Gastron and do some very good damage to the Groudon. And maybe a Hurricane and a Grassy Glide will pick up the knockout on the Groudon. Uh, but if you go for that, then the Rillaboom goes to sleep and then that would just allow the Calyrex uh, to be able to start launching off Astral Barrages against only one Pokemon that would be able to attack it on that turn. Uh, so yeah, very, very good play. Again, coming out from this Gastrodon does not care, just going straight for the Yawn. And now we're just going to have to see whether Juan opts to leave in his Rillaboom to go to sleep, uh, but it's not going to be the case. Going to switch back out into that Grim Snarl. Yeah, Grim Snarl switching out, of course. Having your Rillaboom being put to sleep is really, really bad for your strategy going into this. So Juan making a good choice there. We do see Hurricane coming out. No confusion uh, being applied onto the Groudon. There was a chance, of course, as a secondary effect of that move. But Groudon, on the other hand, goes for the Swords Dance. It is now at plus two of its attack, whilst its good old partner, Gastrodon, by its side, is trying to put yet another Pokemon to sleep. It's gone for the Yawn into the Zapdos once again putting that one turn pressure onto it whether it switches out or it stays in and incurs the sleep yeah, and now you have to effectively choose to sacrifice your airstream boost once again, and that will free up the Calyrex that is waiting in the back once again. Uh, the Gastron going for the Swords Dance is a little bit awkward in the face of the foul play that could come out from the Grim Snarl, uh, but still going to be able to do some very good damage before that would come out. Um, pretty very close if the Groudon is able to be KO'd uh, from that foul play, given the damage it's already taken. I would expect it to go down to that attack, uh, but you can very safely just Ice Beam the Zapdos. Like, it didn't carry Protect at all. You're either hitting a Zapdos that would be staying in and falling asleep, or you are hitting this Rillaboom that is switching in now. Yeah, as we're going to be seeing the Precipice Blades coming out, dealing a very good amount of damage onto that Grimmsnarl there, but not enough to pick up the KO. But we do see the Foul Play, on the other hand, go ahead and pick up the KO, thanks to the plus two of the Groudon's attack there. It makes a lot of sense, Foul Play. That is why it is such a good utility move there, as we see the Gastron once again going for that repetitive and continuous yawning action.
Yeah, so the Rillaboom ha once again has to decide uh, whether it's staying in. Try and deal with this Gastrodon. That is the best way of breaking through it now at this point. Uh, because of all the grassy terrain recovery and the leftovers, after that initial airstream that the Gastron's taken, it's looking pretty comfortable at this point. Uh, especially with this Incineroar switching in, uh, to, most likely going to keep this Gastrodon safe, even if you go for the fake out into the Rillaboom and they fake out your Gastrodon. The Grimmsnarl isn't really doing anything that turn, so that's going to allow a little bit more recovery as well onto the opposing Gastrodon. Uh, so yeah, even though you would got the initial damage, you just need to follow up with another airstream at some point to be able to pick up the knockout it kept itself safe from the second one by going for the protect and now it's looking pretty healthy once again and yeah. the Rillaboom has to decide whether it's staying in or not so this is still a very very good position uh, for the Gastrodon you can just go for a protect this turn if you wanted uh, if, even if the Rillaboom switches back out into the Zapdos it doesn't really matter too much because then mm -hmm. next turn you are still looking very safe and can just start spamming the Ice Beams or the Yawns once again and the Incineroar has got the Intimidate down onto the Rillaboom as well if it wants to go for the attacks this turn and it is staying in and there's no fake out from the Rillaboom either it's taking the slower fake out from the Incineral. Oh, as we do see the Grimmsnarl is setting up a light screen to try to better bolt out those specially offensive moves. Yawn coming out as we saw the tile following suit to his uh, gameplay style the past how many turns tried to yawn that Rillaboom slot there to try to guarantee any sort of switch ins. But no, the Rillaboom is not going to be put to sleep, uh, sleep Jamie. And um, once again, I think Juan just doesn't have a lot of answers to this repetitive situation uh, because fake out pressure, stopping the Rillaboom from attacking when it really wants to finally pick up a K on the Gastrodon just makes so much sense and is very oppressive for Juan's strategy. Yeah, the fake out on the Yawn was utterly safe from Carl's side of the field. If the Rillaboom stays in, we see what happens. If it switches out into the Zapdos, you're yawned again and you have to still make that decision. Uh, so yeah, the Rillaboom opting to just stay in now. Take the Flare Blitz, take the Ice Beam that is coming its way. And then so the foul play was very nice in dealing with the Gastrodon, but it is not at all in dealing with the Gastrodon. If it was Spirit Break, that would have been able to do something to the Gastrodon. Uh, but foul play is able to do a reasonable chunk to the Incineroar. Uh, but now the Rillaboom has been taken care of. You've got to rely on the, on the Zapdos at this point to try and deal with the Gastrodon. And it has to do that by hitting Hurricanes outside of the rain against a quaked Gastrodon. So that's uh, looking very, very good for Kyle. Oh. The Gastrodon just still, once again, just sat on the field the entire time. It's nearly back at full HP at this point. Uh, yep. Given that it's take, it was down probably below three quarters uh, after the first two turns. It really back, <laughs> nearly back to full HP. So yeah, the Gastrodon has absolutely been the MVP in this game. Uh, very mm -hmm. brave as well. It faced down that Rillaboom multiple times and just did not care about any grassy glides that could have come its way. And they did not come its way, so it was able to just yep. fire off the yawns, uh, constantly cycling those yawns, forcing the switches, forcing the sleeps that had to come out at this point. And then eventually, mm -hmm. Juan just gave in, the Rillaboom got faked out and went to sleep, and now the Gastron it essentially is going to run away with this game. Only Hurricane Confusions can save this now. Maybe Hurricane Critical hits as well, uh, but Gastron is just in a fantastic position once again. Yeah, you would have thought that um, that Rillaboom has been put to sleep for a while, having its eyes closed and not being able to see that Gastrodon, but no. It's just <laughs> uh, absolutely been ignoring it, and it's suffer suffered the consequences. As we see the Hurricane out of rain does connect onto the Gastrodon there, doesn't pick up a Confusion, deals a bit of damage, but more importantly, the Incineroar is uh, very free to go for that parting shot, drop its special attack output, and <laughs> pivot in for this fully health. Calyrex Shadow Rider, which does not have its Focus Sash broken, at least up until this moment, as there may be a foul play coming into it. Yeah, that would still do a very sizable amount of damage. It would almost certainly bring it down to its Focus Sash. That was respectable into the Gastrodon, given yep. that it's not a physical attacker, but Spirit Break would have been so much more effective there. You just get to start going for the Yawns at this point into, mm -hmm. the, into the Grim Snarl. You can just go for a Protect with your Calyrex, and then it will not take a Thunder Wave or a Foul Play at this point, and then the, Gastron, the Grim Snarl will go to sleep, and you can just start safely firing off your, your Astral Barrages at this point. Even if the Zapdos goes for a Roost at this point, uh, it's still going to have to take on the Calyrex. It can go for some eerie Impulses at some point, uh, but mm -hmm. really the Gastrodon is still looking in a very nice position. Could even consider going for something like an Earth Power into the Zapdos. Just keep make sure that it is keeping the Zapdos low. Because uh, even if you won't do any damage this turn, if it doesn't roost, mm -hmm. you would be doing significant damage if it does go for the roost instead. But just the double yep. protect from Gastron, uh, very safe. Only a roost can come out from the Zapdos that can actually do something. It is going to be a Hurricane yep. instead. Uh, but this just means the Grimmsnarl goes to sleep. There's no Thunder Waves. And then the Calyrex is just free to launch off the Astral Barrages.
no no way for i don't know i I think it's just it's very oppressive the way passive uh oppressive should i say from how tile's been managing this scenario there's not a lot of things on juan's side of the field that can uh, directly threaten this gastrodon uh, based on their team build and uh, i think the fact that you're able to go ahead and completely neuter the rillaboom with a consecutive yawn turn pressures and then at some point just break it down slowly it, it, it just you essentially get your win condition thrown out of the window and you got the scenario where Grim, where the Gastrodon's just running away with this game and you know Hurricanes sure they are connecting they they are oh, actually finally is. getting confusion <laughs> onto the Calyrex but I would have been hoping to have seen that on the Gastrodon the previous turn because what is going to stop this Gastrodon from another yawn nothing Jamie and we just see Kyle running away with it yeah, just a, a couple more Astral Barrages at this point. Uh, you can go for an Earth Power to pick up the knockout on the opposing Grim Snarl as well. And yeah, it's, it's very comfortable for the Calyrex and the Gastron at this point. Maybe you can wake up with the Grim Snarl and then uh, get the Thunder Wave into the, the Calyrex and then get your um, critical hit Hurricane into the Gastron. It is like, still technically not over at this point. Playing a little bit extra safe with the, with Kyle's side of the field. Mm. There's no reason not to at this point. The yep. odds are significantly in Kyle's favor. And the Zapdos is going to go to sleep at the end of this turn. And keeping the Calyrex safe makes a lot of sense there. No first turn wake for the Grim Snarl either. So even if there was any Thunder Waves that were coming out, uh, then the Incineral wouldn't have been affected either. And Zapdos is going to be going for the Roost here. Uh, but if you just go for the Earth Power into that Zapdos, you guarantee that it stays low or takes a huge amount of damage like we are indeed seeing here. Yeah, and it makes a lot of sense because right now the Gastrodon just doesn't <laughs> care as much in this scenario. The main threat to the Gastrodon is gone. It is going to be getting that passive uh, HP recovery over time. Thanks to the leftovers, it has no reason not to go for the Earth Power expecting the Roost play from the Zapdos. And in this scenario, very, very, very um, <laughs> oppressive play from Tile, which he's just played so well. He's made the right choices. He knows Gastrodon is the MVP that he needs to try to guarantee a win. And that's what we've just seen. This is just uh, that weak spot in Juan's team uh, to essentially break it all down the moment that the Rillaboom is gone. Yeah, and the Zashin not coming to the uh, to the match at all is always going to be uh, detrimental to you if you're not bringing both of your restricted to the match. Uh, this Zashin does only have Behemoth Blade and Sacred Sword. It does not opt to run Play Rough. Uh, that is a coverage move on Zashin's that is very useful when you are pairing it with a Kyogre. It's able to hit something like the Gastrodon that would have been able to do some very significant damage. I can hit a lot of the Pokemon that Kyogre uh, doesn't really want to be facing up against. And you can see the, the downside of not running Play Rough on this kind of team. Uh, because yeah. Zashin was just not even brought to the match because it wasn't considered good enough. And because of that, the Gashon was still able to just go free reign in this game. The Flare Blitz able to take out the Grimstone and take the game for, uh, take the match for Kyle 2 and 0. Oh. And the Gashon was just absolutely the MVP there. There was a Rillaboom that could have grassy glided it a few times. There were opportunities that that grassy glide could have gone off, uh, but mm -hmm. they, they did not. And so just expertly played from the, uh, from the Gastrodons and, and Kyle's side of the field very dominant display of VGC um, understanding of matchups. So I think uh, in that scenario, you would have thought Gastrodon's a third restricted. It was so overpowered <laughs> because it just essentially just sat there and just kept on putting that pressure on, whether that be having Storm Drainer's ability, um, you know, to kind of counter uh, Seismitoad and Kyoga, or whether that be just going and getting Yawns off and just hitting, uh, you know, with coverage type moves like Ice Beam, for example, the Zapdos and the Rillaboom, because in the end of the day, there was not much that Juan could have done. Uh, we did talk about Zashian wasn't brought there. Um, it doesn't make sense to bring it, does it? Because you've got the Gastrodon, which is a big threat. You've got the Groudon, which is a big threat. They're both ground-type moves, uh, ground-type Pokemon, apologies. And uh, you've just got all of this pressure with the Incineroar as well. But what I feel may have been a mishap, or I, at least I would have liked to see from Quan's side, is the Seismitoad. Because the Seismitoad actually has Power Whip as a coverage type move it has it on the public pace you will see it maybe they could have been able to exert more pressure on it but then again it's still tough because the gastrodon even though it survived for so long you would have thought oh maybe it's a rindoberry no there was no rindoberry it could have been knocked out if from a grassy glide easily but it's just kyle played so well they didn't allow the rillaboom to even get that move off
Yeah, and in, in the game two as well, uh, Juan was effectively playing without a restricted because the Kyogre just got critical hit immediately yes. and then just did nothing. It would have actually been a pretty reasonable position for one if that critical sure. hit wouldn't have happened. We could have sure. just seen an airstream and an origin pulse the next turn. Uh, but yeah, that, that critical hit through in, uh, just knock out the Kyogre. Uh, as soon as the Rillaboom wasn't able to land a Grassy Glide into the Gastron, uh, because that wasn't the case, there was no real answer to the Gastron. It just ran ran through the both of the games. It just As soon as it joined the field, uh, yeah. it got a Quake, quake boost and then it was sorted for the rest of the game. It can take on the Zapdos very well. It can just start spamming the Yawns and just stare down the Rillaboom. It doesn't care about Grassy Glides. So it was able to just very comfortably take that game, especially after the Kyogre was taken care of in that game too with that critical hits. Uh, so yeah, very, very good showing for Gastrodon there and Kyle as well, moving on to the top eight. Uh, so that is going to be it uh, for this round. And we'll be moving on to the quarterfinals next. So we're going to cut to a very short break and we will be right back with the quarterfinals.